So what is sharding in terms of blockchain is what we're going to talk about in today's video. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and now let's jump into it. The blockchain network is the database with the nodes representing individual data servers. If we apply sharding to blockchain, this would mean breaking up the blockchain network into individual segments or shards. Each shard would hold a unique set of smart contracts and account balances. Nodes would then be assigned to individual shards to verify transactions and operations, instead of each being responsible for verifying every transaction on the entire network. So, how does sharding work anyway? To explain sharding, let us use the Ethereum blockchain as an example. The Ethereum blockchain is made up of thousands of computers, currently 8622, each lending a certain amount of hash power to the network. It is the, this hash power that allows the Ethereum virtual machine to execute smart contracts and run decentralized applications. A transaction passing through the verification process can take a long time. Currently, Ethereum is hovering at around 10 transactions per second. Visa, for comparison, does 24,000 transactions per second on average. Adding computers to the network will not necessarily improve efficiency, as the whole ledger is kept on every single computer on the chain or verification will just become longer. With sharding, blockchain will be divided into separate shards. Nodes will only have to run the part of the ledger that they are assigned in order to execute processes and validate transactions, instead of maintaining the whole ledger all of the time. As mentioned above, one of the biggest problems facing blockchain network is the issue of scalability. The more popular blockchain network becomes, the more users are initiating transactions, decentralized applications and other processes on the network. Increased transaction activity places increased demand on nodes to verify transactions and there's a real threat that these blockchains could become clogged up. If this happens, transaction speeds become painfully slow, which is not an ideal situation for long-term sustainable blockchain adoption. So if the blockchain is broken up into smaller segments with Teams of nodes assigned responsibility to individual segments, every node won't have to maintain the entire ledger to execute every operation. Transaction validation can therefore happen in parallel rather than in a linear fashion, increasing the speed of the entire network. It provides a solution to the scalability issues surrounding blockchain networks and therefore makes it more sustainable in the long term. But the main challenges of sharding relate to communication and security. If you split a blockchain into isolated segments, each shard will appear as a separate blockchain network. Users and applications of one subdomain will not be able to communicate with users and applications of another subdomain without the implementation of a special inter-shard communication mechanism. This adds an additional layer of complications for developers to think about. Security also becomes a concern, as it is easier for hackers to take over a single shard due to the reduced hash power required to control individual segments also known as a single shard takeover attack or a 51% attack. Once a segment has been hacked, the attackers can potentially submit invalid transactions to the main network, or is it possible for information in the specific segment to be invalidated and lost permanently. Two additional proposals have been suggested by developers to improve performance and transaction speed on blockchains. The first is to increase the block size with the basic thinking being that the bigger the block size, the more transactions you can fit into a block and therefore the higher the number of transactions per second will be. All true this is the true. It also means that the bigger the block size is, the more computing power is needed to verify the block. If block sizes were to be increased indefinitely, only the most specialized, highly powered computing equipment would be able to handle the required processing power needed to act as a node. 
the increased cost of this type of equipment would mean node pools would necessarily become smaller and more centralized, increasing the risk of a 51% attack. Increasing the block size would also require a hard fork, which risks splitting the community. If not everyone upgrades to the new blockchain, two separate chains will exist, using two separate coins. Because of these issues, increasing the block size is only a short-term solution. The second proposal is to use altcoins, so the different function and different applications would run on their own chain with their own coin. This would increase performance because you don't overload a single blockchain, but it will also increase security risks because all of the hashing power is now split over several blockchains. Again, this makes it much easier to hack the network, as the amount of hashing power needed to execute a successful 51% attack is much smaller. Therefore, it's not a good solution. And thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to leave us a like, hit that subscribe button and do let us know in the comment section down below what would you like to watch on this channel on the next episodes. Until the next video, bye bye.